School's out and it's high season. Blackpool Pleasure Beach is heaving with families and children. They may not look very threatening, but security guard Bill Mullin isn't taking any chances. Jesus, body armor. The man in charge of the park, Jim Rowland, reckons Bill is overtooled. He's got more pouches on there than Batman. I mean, Jesus, he has, honest to God. One day, you will see him on the Tom Sawyer Bridge, take this thing out of his utility belt, throw it across, it'll sling around on the Big Dipper, and he'll swing across the river. Because he has it all. <laughs> But today it looks as though Bill might need his utility belt. Excuse me. A Barney has broken out in the kids' park, where a man has been spotted punching his wife. An off-duty policeman has stepped in to sort it out. Yeah. Who's it? Who? These two bad ones. From my colleague, I believe you're a police officer. Yeah. yeah. I'm just trying to stop a woman getting beaten. Up. Yeah. Right. Well, that's what I want to. Yeah. Obviously, find out what's going on. What happened was, I saw this guy hit a woman kids. pulling her hair. Come on. Yeah. So I saw him do it twice. I thought, well, it's, he's going to beat her up in a minute. Yeah. I, so I walked across to try and sort it out. Yeah. And as I came across, he started punching her. So right. I just tried to stay in between him, and all his brothers were telling me to go away before I got hurt and all this. That's his wife, like. She yeah. wants to press any complaints. No, no, no. She's not. Right. Yeah, it's been a heated domestic down here. Um, it's sorted out now. There's an off-duty police officer involved in it, but uh, he's given these details, and um, all allegations have been removed now, and they're all leaving. But there's domestic harmony at the front gate. Pete and Julie have just got married, and they've come to the Pleasure Beach to celebrate. Congratulations. Operations manager Keith Allen will do the honours. The man accused of beating up his wife has not left the park. They're together again, but they're both refusing to leave. They claim that two of their children have gone right. missing. Right, looking for the two lads. So, right, right. Well, once you find your kids, can you leave the park, yeah, please? Just give ten pounds right. a piece for vans. We'll do. We'll do. We'll get the money back. Yeah, we'll just give ten pounds a piece for vans. Well, you know that's good where the kids is. I've got a little lad missing. Yeah, well, if you yeah, give your money back, we'll leave hey, you the park. What's the problem about that? Now, if you want to do a proper job instead of standing there, you should be looking for them. Can you see that, officer? They've got here for call of violence. That's what we were asking yeah. for. We've got here because there's been a report of violence. Where's the violence? Where's the violence? Well, obviously, Where's it's the finished now, it's hasn't it? There's only violence by a police officer to come and spy and look down his phone. Yeah. Get the details of these kids. We'll get it put out on the air. Right, you want to write the details down, then I'll sort it out. Sir, I'm a gypsy. Right, right. Can't read right. just Can't explain read to him right. what right. we've yeah. lost and what they look like then. Andrew. Andrew. Yeah. Pete and Julie want to launch their married life with a glass of bubbly at the top of the world's tallest roller coaster, the big one. Keith has let them jump the queue. Please do not stand up. Do not raise your arms in the air. Come here, right? Okay. I'll see you at the top. Okay. Security have been given the runaround. The so-called missing children have reappeared. There's one. You've got one. There's two. You got them too. Yeah. Right. Yeah. We've got your kids now. Your kids are back. Yes. Right. Yeah, We've got to let you stay on the park. Yeah, right. But I don't want another call back down for a domestic violence again. But there's no domestic in it. Where's the domestic? Anyway, we don't want another call back down. Or oh, next time we'll have to leave. Right. Thank you. The worst you can get. Don't get involved. Yeah. If you try and arrest one of them, the other one will turn on you. Yeah. No. Even though that one's just beat them up. You know, the husband might beat the wife up. You arrest the husband for beating the wife up. And the wife will turn around and hit you. Don't hit my husband, don't. You know, and you're like, what? No, well, he's just beating you up. All the same. But well, you arrest the wife, the husband lays in Have a glass of some. Have a glass each. 235 feet above the fray, they've stopped for the toast. Congratulations. Some confetti. Who's in charge of the confetti? Right. I think it's absolutely marvellous. 
something different that they will remember all their lives. When I think of my wedding, all prim, and all this is so exciting, isn't it? They are mad, but it's nice mad. Congratulations. OK? We'll see you down there somewhere. Look after your missus. All right. See you later. If Pete and Julie want to start a family, help is at hand. Ripley's Believe It or Not Museum of the Weird and Wonderful is preparing to exhibit two fertility statues from the Bowley tribe in North Africa. They're said to be powerful magic. Public Relations Director Helen O'Neill is on her way over to discuss the arrangements. These fertility statues, um, ladies that want to have babies, touch them and suddenly miracles happen. And ladies are sending in things from all around the world and the staff who unpack the boxes have got to keep gloves on and they've got them in florida and ladies who work there were who've been trying for years to have a family suddenly got pregnant and the statues have been on a world tour apparently they've triggered off 307 pregnancies so far what we're we doing then where are we up to we're still we're still looking at uh, the fifth of may yeah. Paul Stevenson is the manager of Ripley's and Mike Brown is in charge of arcades. Um, what's the actual height of them? How tall are they? But the, the size doesn't matter. <laughs> so your staff going to be handling them with care? My staff have already refused. Really? And we've got, uh, we, we've got a boycott on. <laughs> yes, OK, sometimes you can be a bit cynical, but if all these genuine families and ladies are saying that after years and years of trying that they've got pregnant, then, you know... Who can doubt it? Maybe we don't understand it, but I think it's a good idea. First in line to try her luck will be Louise Stevenson, the manager's wife. I do believe it, yes. Yeah, I do. Without looking forward to them coming. She, she was pregnant early on this year and uh, she lost it to uh, ectopic pregnancy, so it is quite hard, really. You know, but uh, everything's OK now. Uh, we've had the old clear and everything, we've got tests and everything. We'll have to see. I mean, I'll have a go touching the statues and see what happens then. Obviously, you need the male to help you. <laughs> Bill's had his fill of young males, especially when they've had their fill of drink. Uh, how far behind me? Yeah, I spotted them. It's all right, thanks. How old are you? 18. Just been seven. No, too late. Thank you. I'll have them. Manino Let it go. Let it go. Manino okay. Manino I mean, look at us, Manino I'm going home tonight. Right, go on, you just took my pint off me. Yep, goodbye. I'm just going home. Goodbye. You took my pint. No, I mean, no, wait there. Can I see, can I see something in the camera? Take him off the park. Can I see, can I see the ca something in the camera? No. Blackpool Pleasure Beach puts on a magic show twice nightly. This year, it stars Richard Devere with his canine companion. Richard, too, has fertility on his mind. We're going to the kennels. Are we going to uh, Schnorbitz's boyfriend? <laughs> Which uh, should be quite interesting, because uh, now is the time to get Schnorbitz in the family way. With fingers crossed, we might get the new Schnorbitz on the litter. That's if everything goes to plan. Schnorbitz is a famous performing dog who starred on TV with the late Bernie Winters. Actually, she's the latest in a long line of Schnorbitzes, and Richard doesn't want her to be the last. Hi, oh, you're nice, Hello, darling. So is, uh, is maybe the father to be? Is he, are they ready to meet? Well, I'll give Lindsay a shout. OK. And we'll bring him out for you. All right. Come on, then. Go and say hello. Go and say hello. Maybe Jason's a bit scared. <laughs> yeah, she isn't really ready yet, is she? Right. You'll soon know when she's ready with Jason. <laughs> well, no comment on me, really, is there? <laughs> <laughs>
Seventeen. Oh, do you? Seventeen is drove you. I can smell it off you. I can smell it off you. You know, idea on you. Bill is close to the end of his tether. More young drunks have been throwing their weight around. The ride operator witnesses spitting on a young girl for no reason whatsoever. I didn't know what. Sorry, I the No, I don't know what. I don't know. No, I don't know. I don't know. I'm no get nasty. I'm not getting nasty, but I don't know. Towards no. the gate, please. I want money back. No, no. no. I want my money back. No, no. back. Are you are you not leaving the park? You're refusing to leave the park? Yeah. I am, yeah. yeah. I want my money back. Can you just move out of the way, please, folks? I want my money back. No. What? Stand there. All right, all right, all right, I'll go, I'll go. What? Please, I'll, I'll go. You're going to leave? Yeah. All right, but what happens? Come on, lads, out of the way. What about money? Sorry, but you're not getting your money back either. Oi, other side of the wall. You don't come back on tonight. Come back when you're sober. Oh, ah, ah. If you got chucked off, you get your money back. No. It's your own fault. You shouldn't be prattin' about. No, so there's, there's no chance, sir. Nope. OK, goodbye. <laughs> High hopes for Richard and Schnorbitz. Today, the fertility statues are due to arrive. Tracy, one of the cabaret showgirls, has been asked along to add a touch of glamour to the occasion. 307 people have um, written back to Ripley and said they've been pregnant just from touching them. And some of them claim that like, the, the male fertility statue actually like grants them their wish by like, and, like they see him move towards them and like grant them their wish of pregnancy. So, don't go near them. <laughs> Couldn't have happened at a better time, could it? <laughs> you know, uh, no success yesterday, so uh, straight after she meets the fertility statues, I'm hot footing it down back to the stud dog <laughs> and let's see if it works. <laughs> to heighten the drama, security has been told to take special care when handling the statues. You ready, guys? It's a big day for Louise and Schnorbitz. You two lads got the bike. Daddy, come out. Now, are you going to touch these? Well, not for me. It'd be a bit of a joke, that, wouldn't it? Geoffrey Thompson is the owner of Blackpool Pleasure Beach. If there's any publicity going, Geoffrey's always on hand. I'm not touching it. Oh. Very, very interesting. This is what the, the war in the Congo is all about at the moment, I suspect. <laughs> John, just grab this one here. Yeah. Oh, no, she doesn't like it. Oh, do we do silly things? Do we do silly things? <laughs> <laughs> oh, that's lovely. I'm not having sex for six months now. <laughs> You're the snob, it's the famous one. Yeah, well, this, this is the daughter of the famous one. Is it? Yeah. Well, you remember snob, it's well, like you do. strike to know something. Yeah. Yeah. Anyway, no. we better get off. <laughs> Let's go and make babies. And as soon as the statues are erected, Louise makes a beeline. When the statues arrived, I wanted like to touch them straight away. So I went and touched the female of the baby, and as soon as I put my hands on the head of the baby and the legs, my stomach really pulled in tight. It was like, oof, correct. So anyway, when I came back into the staff room, I said to Cheryl, I says, oh, I says, um, when I just touched the fertility statue, then I said, my stomach really pulled. Right, she said, oh, did it? I said, yes, it was really funny. And then I went and I did what I had to, went back to work. Heidi then goes and touches it. Right, she gets the same sort of feeling as I got. And she went and got yourself in paracetamol, it was, wasn't it? There's something definitely about them, definitely. When you touch her, I don't know, especially if you want a baby, I think she brings, like, some sort of magicalness into it. There's something definitely in it. I do believe it. <laughs> I'm just like...
We've got an announcement going out for a little boy who's lost on the park somewhere. He's all the way from Manchester, and he's wearing a stripy T-shirt with Kids Club written on it. Our real biggest problem here with families is that they tend to lose a lot of children. Well, actually, we don't get lost children. We get lost parents. The children always know where they are because they're in Blackpool Pleasure Beach. The parents then end up panicking because they're not sure where the children are. And I suppose in the course of a day, like today, we'll probably handle about 20, 30, perhaps even 40 lost parents, not lost children. Though. Matthew Thomas Busby McAvoy. We've got a parent in guest relations that's, or two parents, lost a child, been lost for an hour. I'm just going down to see if I can help. Usually we find them very quick, but when it gets on an hour, you, you get a little bit worried about it. Especially with what goes on today in the world, so. I saw him go past and I shouted and he turned round and as I went round to go to him um, he was on his way to see her and her granddad and when I looked it just got. So you just lost sight? Didn't you? Yeah, just didn't see him again. Five year old Matthew, his big sister and the baby have been brought to the Pleasure Beach by their grandparents. Okay, it won't be long last. you just okay. got another check, okay? Thanks. Granddad is sent off to help security while Grandma stays to fill in the details. Does he know whereabouts he's staying in Blackbury just at day trip? We've, we've only just come. We've, I've been picked my husband up from the golf club and we've just said we'd take him out to surprise him for a treat. Right. So you, you're on a day trip? Yeah. It's a horrible <laughs> feeling. That. His mum, she was terrible. She was shouting at me. Why did you take him to Blackpool? Why, as he might be swept out to sea, because anything could have happened. The, the, the fertility statues are now on display, but the public seems a little wary. Does anybody want to touch them? I don't have kids, it is. You know. <laughs> <laughs> Do you like to touch our statues? Yes? Oh, we, we've got to take them. Go for it. There you go. Would you like to sign our guest book just so that you've touched them? Good on you. Oh! You do it as well. <laughs> 40 minutes later, there's still no sign of Matthew. As Grandad and security guardian Patrick check the park yet again, JR begins to fear the worst. Check that lake. You know what I'm looking for, don't you? Well, you know we've lost a kid for an hour, don't you? There's a lot of water to check. Has he got any friends or relatives in Blackpool? No, like that? no. Has he any money in your position? No. The baby represents the main importance here. The mango represents fertility. So we suggest that you touch them both together. Yeah. A little wish. I know. I should have 308 women actually pregnant after such a Well, I also have to come in and tell them to treat them. So did you think it's possible? Excellent offer. Yeah. Mrs. Johnson has come all the way from Chester just to touch the statues. I had lazy eggs and they weren't going to the proper size. So they put me on the drug metadine. You inject yourself with 
and this was like our last chance before waiting for IVF and then I said to my husband we've got to we've just got to go to Blackpool I was really mired in the life out but we've got to go it got so bad though I was really I was walking past shops and there was prams with babies in and it was I had to stop myself from going up and just walking away with the baby it was so bad been married 15 years married 15 years we've done the partying and the Disco in and the holidays and holidays. I think now it's just it's the ice down, on the down. Cake, isn't it? Our own little person, our own little human being. So if it works out, I'll let you know. Put your fingers crossed. See ya. <laughs> Whenever there's a lull, Louise gets Paul to give the statues another quick feel. It's like every time I get the chance, I'm in, I'm touching, you know, just hoping it'll help. Because we want to get it right this time, we don't want any more, you know, unhappiness. Um, even though it's been four months on, I've still not forgot. The, like the baby we lost, to me it was a baby, even though they said it was just a fetus, it was a baby. So. So you're hoping that this will bring you a bit of luck and... Let's give it one more time. Maybe I'll be alright. You're alright, everything's alright, isn't it? Yeah. Ian and Grandad have gone to check the car park, but it's a long way from where young Matthew was last seen. Yeah, we completed a full sweep of the logs we made there, it's all clear. Right, thank you very much for that. Patrol to evasion. Patrol to evasion. Patrol to evasion. Patrol to evasion, priority call. Ma Thank you. TT Patrol 1. Yeah. We've found them. Oh, yeah. Come here. Oh, right. <laughs> we found them. Grandfather yeah. and grandson reunited both here for me. Yeah. One the base, we found yeah. them. And now we are just about to reunite them all together. Mummy, Nana left me. <laughs> she didn't leave you. She did. Well, where did she go? I didn't leave you. I was in there as well. And you always think, you know, somebody just put you, I mean, you shouldn't think like that, but how you think of all sorts, don't you? I just thought somebody might have just grabbed him, you know. Well, you, I, I, honestly, I'll thought all sorts go through your mind. Unbelievable. Oh, no. Good idea, line, <laughs> it? Oh, yeah, there you go, see. <laughs> <laughs> We never, I mean, they're all around there, but I mean, they wouldn't I know thought I said, gone over there. I said, go back and check the car. Yeah. Funny feeling. Yeah. He might know where the car is. Him knowing. Oh, oh, been, oh, it's it's it. Very often finding your way to the car. I was praying that he'd come back and praying. crossing my fingers and everything. I thought, oh, he, he might have gone this time because... It, well, in it Tesco is. When he, he went done to it the in the Tesco's, but he went to the toilet and he did it in Morrison's. He did it in Morrison's and he's done it in Quicksave and he's done it in the Armdale, but it, 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 he found his way back because he knew we were at the shoe store looking for some trainers for him. I'm just going to, to the, the toilet. I'm just going to the toilet, Nana. <laughs> she didn't even hear him. I was a little bit worried at the time. That's why I had all the log flume lakes checked, just to be on the safe side. Then I said to Ian, the big Scotchman security man, have you checked the car? 
which is the first thing you would do. Said no. So I sent him in the ground follow to the car. And lo and behold, and there he was. There he goes. The hero of the day. Or the villain. <laughs> okay. Okay. Thanks very much. You're welcome. All part of the service. Thank you. Thank you. All in the day's work, I suppose. All in the day's work. Don't lose him again, will you? <laughs> Go straight twice. Eight weeks later, and the Johnsons from Chester are back. Hi. Is the manager around? Oh. The manager? Yes, of course. Yes. He is. One second. Hello, yeah. Hiya. Are you all right? Do you remember us? Yeah, I do, yeah. <laughs> Are you all right? Yes. Let's meet again. Any good news for, uh, for yes. us yet? Oh, yeah. We have? Yes, it's due in February. Oh, congratulations, well done. It's a bit of code, this code's a punch on it. Yeah. I can't believe it. What did your friends say when you told them that you'd come down to touch the statue then? A lot of them were like, because we've tried so long. Like, oh, yeah, I believe it. And you go, well, they act, and they told me. I can't believe it. I'm convinced it was a doll, I'm convinced of it. Show them the pictures. <laughs> and that's. That's a little Johnson. <laughs> that's a head. That's a, the body. And the two legs, two arms. And the circle on the side of it is the yolk that it's The top circle off. is the yolk that the baby feeds off. <laughs> there was a girl walked down the street like yesterday with tight white jeans on, and I looked at the pram she was pushing. I Usually look it. at the jeans. <laughs> That's, That's a, a nice pram walk. He's <laughs> <laughs> totally changed. He's a new man, aren't you? <laughs> <laughs> the lads in the pub will love that one, won't they? Yeah. And a quick wish. But Louise is still waiting for the magic to work for her. Out there? Thought it would have happened. It hasn't. No, I don't know yet. I'm kidding you, um. We'll wait and see, eh? I'm starving again. Would you believe? A big toffee apple dipped in chocolate and then some chips. Linda Johnson gave birth to Todd Howard Johnson. Mother and son are both doing fine. Next week, the magic certainly works for Schnorbitz. Panic sets in as an evacuation goes wrong, and JR takes on the phone bandits. Meet Skipinder, the Punjabi kangaroo. Goodness gracious me.